Welcome back to the channel. So if you follow me on TikTok, you've already seen this car. 1995 Chevy Impala SS. This one has an LSX 454. Also has direct port nitrous, massive camshaft, really open exhaust, 4L80 trans. This one's on a Gen 4 E38 ECU with a T42 TCM. So this is gonna be some Gen 4 tuning. So let's go ahead on and get this thing inside and check it out. She sounds rowdy. Look at that mileage. 26,613. She's low mileage. Let's get her inside. All right, so let's pop the hood on this thing. 454 LSX. LSXR heads, good size primary headers. So we've got a little bit of mismatching plug wires, but they're all clearing, so that's okay. This side looks good. This shop just installed a set of 50 pound Delphi injectors. Only thing I'm really noticing is this intake tube is kind of small for this cubic inch, but otherwise everything else looks good. I don't think we're going to be spraying it today. It does have a Nick Williams 102, fast 102 intake, but either way, I don't think we're spraying it. I think this customer just wants it just to run and drive good, natural aspirated. So let's get this thing backed up on the dyno and go from there. Let's slide underneath it and check it out. Engine looks dry. Front tires are good. It's actually got some coilovers on it. Nice. Got the wheelwood brakes. Well, that's the, that's a different looking set of headers. You got a four to one collector. Maybe that's why this thing sounds so rowdy. I think they're BRP brand. They look like they're like, looks like an engine seven eights. Holly oil pan. Again, yeah, this thing's got a 480 in it. It looks like the trans is leaking a little bit. Three inch exhaust. Got Spintech mufflers on it. Rear tires look good. Drop shaft feels good. Got the aluminum one piece drop shaft. Oh, we got a four nine inch back here. Nice. Tires look good. Let's get this thing down and get on the rollers. All right, so we got the bubble and pull up on the dyno. I'm gonna actually take this time and talk a little bit about business. So I'm gonna put this in the video right here because a lot of people will skip around and just try to see what they make on the dyno. So they probably won't even see this stuff. But I wanna talk to the guys that really support me. I know a ton of you guys are watching all the videos and you're leaving me killer comments and you're sending me messages and I appreciate that. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna give you guys a way to help me grow the channel. So I don't wanna ever ask for money, but I'm gonna leave these monetary options out there for you guys. Again, I don't need anything. Thing. If y'all just want to keep watching, you don't want to spend the money, I totally get it. But I have some membership levels set up now. So basically what it's going to be is if you want to be a membership, just a bronze level member, well, it's $2.99 a month, like $2.99 a month. You'll get a little loyalty badge. And basically what that's going to do is it's going to prioritize your comments to where I'm, you're going to be easier for me to reply to. And you're just basically just supporting me. That's that's the perk of that one. I've got another one for $9.99 a month, like $9.99 a month. And that one's going to give you the same perks as the bronze level. But this one's you're going to have the access to members only videos. Now, I decided I want to do it this way because I've got a ton of you guys asking me some really specific questions and that's 100% okay. But for me to make YouTube videos and put them out to the public, sometimes it doesn't make sense to put some of your very specific stuff in videos. So what I'm gonna do is, is for the $9.99 a month members, you're actually gonna be able to let me know what videos you want me to make and I will make specific members only videos. So say you guys, you know, a ton of you guys have been asking about how I calculate V in the background, things like that. That's gonna be for the guys that are my members for $9.99. Now, eventually I may make those videos, but this one's gonna be more of a quicker way for a, me to get these videos out to you guys because obviously this stuff's pretty easy for me to make a video on so i'm giving you guys the opportunity to be able to just go in and get a membership and you can basically hang out with me and we'll make some videos together and you know i'll let you guys pick videos that i make so the next level is going to be a kind of a expensive one so i had to make it kind of expensive to where it made more sense for me to do this so it's going to be my gold level it's 49.99 a month like 49 dollars 99 a month so you're going to have the same members only video access but what i want to do is i want to connect with those members on social media to where you can direct message me and have a little bit easier access to me but also i'm going to give you guys my personal email address this level is going to be more for the guys that want help tuning your own vehicles like this is not for remote tuning this is for you guys want to tune your own vehicles and maybe you've got a gen 4 vehicle and you need some transmission tuning help or things like that i want to give you guys that access to where i can actually look over your data logs look over your tune and tell you what you need to fix and tell you how to fix it so that's going to be that level um also i've turned on super thanks to where if you 
or watching a video and I've said something or shown you something that really helped you out, I think the super thanks for like $9.99. You can send that to me. And again, I'm gonna take all this money and I'm gonna reinvest it into the channel, whether it be to buy new video equipment or maybe to do a build on the channel or maybe to do a build on the channel and then I'll turn around and give it away. So I'm asking you guys for your support on that just to help me grow this thing faster. So with that being said, if you're still here, leave me a comment of what you think this car is gonna make on the dyno. Again, it's a 454 LSX. It's got LSXR heads. Now I will give you some hints if you're new here i'm on a mustang dyno this reads 10 low we're going to be dynoing this thing in second gear it's the 480 so the 480 is going to absorb some power it also has a nine inch rear so that's going to absorb some power it's also on 24 inch rear wheels which is going to absorb some power and then the final hint will be this thing is running i, I had the guys put in a set of 50 pound injectors and it's on gas and we're not spraying it so if you have a good idea go and leave it down in the comments we got the tune file pulled up this is the tune file that the car come in on the only thing i have changed is the injector data itself this car had a set of fast 65 pound injectors. And honestly, I've had bad luck out of those things. They're basically like a duplicate, almost like a duplicate of like an LS9 injector, but it's Chinese body. I just, I'm not a fan. So we run the Delphi 50 pound injectors. Traditionally, we'll order them from a little website called, I think it's LSX Acceleration. So if you guys ever need 50 pound injectors, it's a good spot to buy them from. Also to some of you guys that have asked me about, you know, other resources you can do to learn tuning on, I always leave a link to one of Greg Banish's tuning books in my description. Um, it's just an Amazon link. It'll take you over there. It is an affiliate link for me. So it does help support me, but the book's like $27, $28, very good book. I bought it myself in 2019. Now keep in mind, I'd already been tuning for 13 years and I'll still buy stuff like that and read through it. And even in 2019, I thought it was a, it was a damn good book. So I'm gonna highly recommend that to you guys. I also always leave links to HP Tuners interfaces in the description as well as a AEM wideband that I actually like to recommend to everybody for, for remote tuning or data logs. It's just an AEM, it's the OB2 one. So it's only used for your CAN based vehicles like 2008 and up. But anyways, I just wanted you guys to know that stuff as well. So tune file wise, I really don't even have anything that can compare this thing to, honestly. So, you know, primarily a vehicle, whenever I start tuning on it, I usually have a stock file that I can put in the background, but everything about this thing is custom. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start this thing up and start to data log it just like it sits. And I'm just gonna make changes as I go. I'm gonna look at the V calculations and map calculations, things like that. So let's go on and check airflow, dynamic. Okay, so we are set up in a hybrid mode right now. So let's put this thing in a map only mode and we're gonna use the math only mode to tune our ve table and again if you guys want to see videos on that i'll i'll make it uh, in the silver level or gold level membership only videos let's load this tune file in as just setting up as math only we'll get to driving it all right so tune file has been loaded in as you guys can see the car is still cool it's 126 degree engine coolant temp eq air is pretty far off right now looks like ve is is pretty far off from dynamic airflow as well so we're just gonna let the thing warm up some. While this thing's warming up, I also wanna to talk to you guys about remote tuning. I've had a ton of people message me about remote tuning. Just so you are aware, if you are a shop and you would like for me to help you with remote tuning on a Gen 3 vehicle, I don't mind, but I prefer not to remote tune Gen 3. There's just so many variables. So if you are a shop, if you wanna shoot me an email, I'll put my tuning email as skytuning at gmail.com and that is sky with s-k-y-e so if you want me to help tuning gen 3 i prefer it to be drive by wire the drive by cable stuff if it's stock throttle body i'm okay with it if you get into aftermarket throttle body stuff even if you're a shop just go in and just say we're going to call that one a no for everybody else though gen 4 gen 5 vehicles as long as you have a wide bin and hp tuners interface i don't mind helping remote tune so again y'all can use the same email skytuning at gmail.com also, please note that I get between comments and messages and emails, I get a hundreds of those a day. So if I don't get right back to you, please bear with me. Um, I did have a guy ask me about remote tunes. Apparently he left me a bunch of comments and you know messaged me on Instagram, all that stuff. He kept blowing up my phone to the point where he started messaging my girlfriend. That's a no-go guys. As soon as y'all do that, I'm blocking your ass. I don't care. Like, please, like I'm a busy person. I'm gonna try to help everybody out. But that's the main point of these videos is I'm trying to help everybody out. I don't owe anybody anything. So a lot of these guys that are messaging me feeling all entitled and shit, sorry, no response from me. Anyways, car's warming up. Um, looks like we are still in open loop. Let's go on and shift this thing over into closed loop. Now, if you notice the VIN number on this thing is showed up as blank. I've had that issue before. I'm not a internal computer kind of guy. I don't know if this is computer failure or somebody just blank the VIN number or what it is. I tried to put a VIN number in it. Didn't really change anything. So if y'all are seeing all the whys, that's what that's about. Let's put this thing over into closed loop. 
Let's see what the oxygen sensors do. All right, so right away I'm gonna notice that the spark is actually, it's capping out where they've got the spark so high, the idle timing so high on this thing, it's actually hitting like a max spark limit. So here's, here's a tip, you know, I try to bring in tip, tuning tips on every single video. So let's go pull up the high octane table. Now again, all this stuff is untouched. So whatever we, we're about to see, this is untouched for me. Okay, oh, so yeah, somebody, somebody was, doing some work and didn't do smoothing anyways so whenever you're like this table right here this is gonna be a cap for your idle timing so you've got your normal idle timing table over here under idle spark advance so they already I can see that they've got entirely too much timing on this thing for idle as it is but so this is where the car wants to idle at right now and then this high octane table is the cap so you always want to make sure your high octane table at idle regions have a high enough number where you can utilize it for idle control. So this engine, I mean, MBT idle may be 38 degrees, maybe 40 degrees, maybe 50 degrees. I'm not real sure, but whatever MBT idle is, or max brake torque idle, whatever the timing that the thing makes the maximum idle torque at is what needs to be set up right here in the idle values. And then we'll actually pull some idle timing down under idle spark advance. And that way, we'll, I'm hoping, you know, hopefully this thing will be cool with idling like right around 15, 16 degrees. That'll really help with the smell at the tailpipes. But that way it'll have some headroom to where if it needs to add a bunch of timing to the thing to have good idle control, it can. So we'll do some spark tuning on that. Looks like math wise though, we're pretty far off on closed loop. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna switch this thing back out and I'm just gonna tune open loop using my Ballinger wideband and another thing i need to explain to you guys that i've said in a couple videos but when it comes to using a wideband at idle widebands will traditionally show lean and so you can't rely on your wideband as much as you would like to at idle the wideband really likes to have some airflow movement across it before it actually gets happy so basically what i'll do is if i end up having to run this thing in open loop which i doubt but if i do you can actually just lean the car out and watch map pressure and you want to just get the car to where it's having the lowest KPA or the highest amount of idle vacuum when it comes to idle tuning. So let's go ahead on and do some spark tuning on that thing and I'll make some adjustments. So again, I'm not going to show you all this stuff. Just know I'm going to pull some, I'm going to pull some spark advance out at idle under the idle spark advance table. And I'm going to go ahead on and build me a base timing table for this thing. Because as you guys can see, somebody was, I guess, watching knock sensors and they didn't finish out the bottom of the table for some reason. I'm not real sure why that is. So anyways, I'm gonna get to work and I'll be right back with you. All right, tune file is loaded in. Startup was a little bit hesitant. I, didn't, I haven't changed anything yet other than the car was actually in open loop permanently. So we're gonna try to run this thing in closed loop. Hopefully this camshaft doesn't give us too much troubles as far as running it in closed loop. Haven't made any other changes though. I just kind of rolled through the tune just kind of quickly you know just made little small changes but everything that i did i've already showed you guys in video so i didn't think there was necessary for me to make that put that in the video as we can see our v table was pretty far off so that's probably the reason why this thing kind of starts shitty idle starting to stabilize but i'm probably gonna have to work on the pid table for the throttle body bank two is going immediately pretty much maxed out bank one is not so that could be from the overlap in the camshaft. Let's go ahead and put this thing in a gear and start driving it. Definitely gonna need to make some changes to the MAF curve and to the VE table. So I'm also seeing some smoke out the back. Almost looks like oil. Kind of smells like oil. I wonder if this engine's hurt. I wonder if it's been sprayed one too many times. I don't know, I'm gonna make, I'm, let's make the changes to the MAF and the VE table and we'll try again. All right, so all I did was I added 10% across the board on the MAF. 
and I went ahead on and switched the car into open loop. We're just going to run this thing in open loop and then try to bring back in closed loop as we're done tuning. So this one's going to be, we're just going to do some more steady state stuff. So I'm going to put this thing into gear. We are getting a little bit of an idle surge. I did make a change to the PID table for the throttle body and apparently I went the wrong way. getting a misfire so as you guys can see I stopped the log but the car if you watch EQ air looks like we're getting a misfire on basically both sides under a load the car stopped let me shut this thing off so y'all can hear me a little bit better but yeah as y'all can see narrow bands were looking clean I mean they were rich you know showing higher voltage like so on the richer side but it was okay this is my V table being calculated based off of dynamic airflow. So it's better, but it's still not where it needs to be. But as we started to go through here and I started to increase load, car started to misfire. But you can see my wideband also calculates VE. So you can see what it wants versus what Dynair is. I mean, we're in the ballpark. Yeah, let me see if the guys put plugs in this thing. I think they did, but let me just, let me make sure. All right, so I talked to Galley. Galley has already put a set of plugs in it. It's got a fresh set of BR70Fs in it. So it does have a set of factory coils that somebody's painted red. I originally thought that maybe it was some MSD coils, but apparently these are factory coils. So what we're going to do is obviously that was at a kind of a moderate load. I'm just going to go ahead on and we'll just go ahead on and lay into this thing. So it's spun, but it actually looks clean. I think sounds rowdy. Pull is clean. This thing just feels spicy. I'm gonna shut it off. Let's look at the data. I got a flashing check engine light too. And the misfire counter has been disabled up to 3000 RPM. So my wild band calculation is a little bit off. We can see that intake's definitely too small. This motor, we should be way over 94 KPA at wide open throttle. All right, let me just clean up the fuel on this thing. I'll go ahead on and just correct the math error and double check the VE table. And I'll just, I'll go ahead on and get through some wide open throttle stuff, fix what I know is off right now and we'll go from there. All right, so loading this tune file in. Only thing I could look at, really see, is obviously we needed to change some wide open throttle fueling. I haven't started touching the VE table yet, but they had the injection timing way different than factory. So this operating system I looked, this actually is a 2010 Camaro LS3 operating system. So I'm assuming it's like a BP harness or something like that. So I went ahead on and I'm putting injection timing back to what a stock LS3 would like. And then if it pisses the car off, we can obviously make changes from there. But otherwise, I don't see anything wrong just yet. So tune files loaded in. Roll up these windows. All right, so let's drive this thing again. Still feels like cylinders are cutting out. Definitely down a couple holes. All right, we're gonna have to pull plugs on this thing. Try to see if we can find one that looks pissed off. Well, unfortunately, we're going to end the video off right here today. So we'll just continue this in tomorrow's video. It's an ignition miss for sure. We're going to go ahead on and pull the plugs, double check them, and it's going to get a new set of wires. These wires are old. They're like old MSD. So we'll try a set of wires on it. May not need some coils. We'll just try to diagnose it the best we can. So the best thing to always do is always replace the wear items. That way it's not an unjustified change. These wires are old. They're actually mismatched, as you guys saw earlier in the video. 
So putting a fresh set of wires, not gonna hurt anything at all. Then if we still have the misfire, we'll go from there. So thanks for the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. And uh, if you are already subscribed, this again, this thing, we'll do the dyno on this thing tomorrow. So if you wanna see the results on this car, go on and subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow.